Even though I put a lot of videos on this channel related to macOS, what most of you may not know is that I've been using Windows my whole life, way longer than macOS. And when I first switched to macOS, and after being bewildered, startled by the build quality of MacBooks, by the new window buttons on the left, by the beautiful mouse cursor, by the weird symbols on the keyboard, when that faded away, I quickly realized that there were many things I expected macOS to do that it didn't. Things I was used to. Things that were a part of my everyday life. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's first fix the most frustrating problems when you first switch from Windows to Mac, and then we'll get to the good stuff. So when you first spawn in, this is most likely what you see. Now this is my own machine, so I have a bunch of stuff already customized and not much junk left. But you will have a lot of junk. Your dock will be full of apps. We're going to get rid of all the useless things in a moment, but first let's make our lives easier and learn how to install apps. There are two options. The first one is the App Store. By the way, what I did here with the search bar was click Command Space and it opened up Spotlight Search. Think of Windows Search, but completely opposite. It actually finds what you're looking for. So if you go into the App Store, you can install a bunch of apps. But what you'll quickly discover is that most of your favorite apps aren't on the App Store. Let's try looking for VLC. As you can see, doesn't exist. Let's look for Google Chrome. Also, doesn't exist. So another way to install apps and the way that you're probably going to be using a lot is through their website. Now when you first set up macOS you won't have any other browser other than Safari so you can open Safari and it looks exactly like a web browser on your iPhone if you have an iPhone. First things first let's quickly go here and uncheck everything so we don't have to deal with all the clutter on the home screen. Next let's download one of the most crucial apps for Mac called Rectangle. So just put in something like Rectangle Mac app or go to rectangleapp.com and you'll arrive. So what does it do? Move and resize windows in macOS using keyboard shortcuts or snap areas. That's right, ladies and mental gen. By default, if I quit my rectangle app that I already have installed, you cannot snap windows on macOS. This is probably one of the first things that you'll notice when you switch from Windows to macOS. And if you ask me, this feature is a must for any desktop operating system. So let's click download, then allow, and it will download. By default, it will be saved to your downloads folder. You can find your downloads folder by going into Finder here, Finder, so you can find stuff there, and here on the sidebar, go into Downloads. You'll see this file with a .dmg extension. If you want to get more information about a folder, a picture, or any file in macOS, highlight it and click Command I on your keyboard. This will open up the info menu, and it basically tells you a bunch of stuff about the app. What kind of file it is, what's the size, what's the resolution, if it's an image. If you want to close this window, or any other window, you can obviously click the red button, but it's very small, so what I recommend doing is using keyboard shortcuts. So to close a window, you press Command W. No matter what app you're in, if you have multiple Safari windows, Command W will close it. So let's open the Rectangle app and see what happens. It gives us this. If I expand it, you can see that it shows you that you need to move the Rectangle app into your Applications folder. And that's how you install apps on Mac. This application file basically has the app already inside of it, so you don't need to do any installing, like on Windows. All you need to do is to drag it into your applications folder. And now I can hit command space to open up spotlight search and look for rectangle. I can click on it to open. Now since we yoinked it from the world wide web, macOS doesn't trust the app. It says it's downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? We trust this app, so let's say open. Next, by default, when you install a new application into macOS, it can't access things like your files and folders, your microphone, your camera, unless you let it to. And here it says, Rectangle needs your permission to control your window positions. Go to System Settings, Privacy and Security, Accessibility. So I can click Open System Settings, which will take me there, and here I can find Rectangle and enable it. It will ask me for my password or Touch ID, so I'm going to put my finger on Touch ID, which will authorize it. And we're in. Welcome to Rectangle. Please select your default shortcuts and behavior. I'm going to go with recommended, but I'm not interested in learning them at the moment. I'm going to go into settings and select launch at login because I want this app to start up every time I restart my Mac. Now you can pick up any window and drag it to the side of your screen to snap it in place. Beautiful. You can see the rectangle icon living up here in your menu bar where all of your menus are, but we'll get to it later. Let's come back to this thing. You'll notice now that on your desktop, this weird thing appeared. This is essentially like rectangle plus 
plugged in a flash drive into your computer. So you can right click and click eject or simply drag it into your trash can to eject it. And now it's gone. Also in the downloads folder, you can delete this DMG file as well, because this is just an installer that held our application. Now the application is inside of our applications folder and we have to get there if we want to uninstall apps. So from your finder, make sure it says finder and not any other app here, because if you have something else open, it will say that app's name. To make it say finder, simply go to finder. Then you can click go and choose applications and it will open the applications folder with all of your apps. Of course, another way to get there would be to use spotlight search, command space and type in applications. It's the first folder here. Beautiful. So to uninstall an app, pick it up and drag it into your trash. It's that easy on macOS. Of course, you don't have to delete something by dragging it into the trash every time. It's a lot easier to use a keyboard shortcut and the one to delete something is command delete. That's right. It's not just delete. Pressing delete will not do anything on Mac. You have to press command delete to delete something, whether it's an app or a folder. By the way, the way I'm putting these back from the trash can is by pressing command Z, which is the keyboard shortcut for undo. So we learned how to install and uninstall apps. Now you can remove all the apps that you'll never use from your Mac. It will free up space and declutter it. I like having only two apps in my dock. Well, clearly not. Only two open apps when I don't have anything else open. You can see these black dots underneath each app and that means that that app is open. Now it's not necessary for an app to have any windows open on macOS for that app to still be open. It's so that it opens easier the next time. Now it took a lot faster than if I quit it and then try to open it. It took a little longer. So if you want to fully quit an app on Mac, you have to either come here at the top to Safari and say quit Safari, which is very slow, or use a keyboard shortcut, command Q for quit. Now there's no Safari in my dock. And the same for all of these apps. If there's a black dot underneath, it means that this app is open. Now what I personally like is removing everything from the dock. If I close all of these apps, they don't actually stay in my dock. And the only two apps that I have pinned to my dock is my browser and Photoshop. The reason Photoshop's here is because it's super easy to drag something into Photoshop and it immediately opens. I don't have to go into file and click new file to create a new file. That's the only reason it's here. But how did I just take this screenshot? To take a screenshot on Mac, it's very easy. And once again, you have to use a keyboard shortcut. If you press command shift three, it will take a screenshot of your whole desktop. So everything on the desktop. If you click command shift four, you will be able to select what you want to capture with this rectangle. If you don't like where it started, you can hold space and move it around like so. Or you can hold option to resize it in all four directions. It's not super useful, but when I do this, it looks really nice. That's why I showed it. So let's screenshot the mouse, boing. And now I only have the screenshot of my mouse here. One more useful detail is that you don't have to double click on a file to open it on Mac. It's actually quite slow. So I'm going to quit this with command Q and I can highlight the app and press space bar to preview it. There's no need to double click to open. This works with any video or photo or any other file. Now I can use my up or down arrow keys to change the file that I want to preview. And to close the preview, I'm going to hit space bar again. So this is the best way to view what an app is on Mac. Just highlight it and press spacebar. Now back to screenshots. One last keyboard shortcut is command shift five. And this is an all in one. If you're going to forget command shift three or command shift four, command shift five is the one to remember. You can capture your entire screen, capture a selected window, caption a portion of your screen and also record your screen. And on Mac OS, it's super easy to record your screen. You can go to options and select your microphone or if you want to show mouse clicks, for example, and simply click enter to record. Now it's recording and to stop it, I can come here, click this one and the recording is done. Here I can also click this button, which will allow me to trim the recording if I didn't like the start or the end of it. And once I click done, it will be saved to my desktop. If I preview it, there's the recording. Very nice. Now you might have noticed that I keep doing this. I keep coming with my mouse to this corner and once I touch the corner, it shows all the folders that are on my desktop. This is called a hot corner. I can open up spotlight search and look for system settings. Inside here, let's go to desktop and dock and here you will find 
hot corners. I'll click on it and I can customize what each corner does when I move my mouse there. So I have the bottom left one go to my desktop. And you can set it up to do many different things like start a quick note or show all of your apps like this. But I prefer to show my desktop because when I'm in another app and it's full screen, it's really annoying to go here and resize it, especially if there are multiple windows that are full screen, I would have to resize each one to access things on my desktop. And instead of doing that, I can just go bloop and have access to every folder on my desktop. This is especially useful for video editing because I can pick something up from the desktop and drag it straight into my timeline. Another cool option is application windows, which will show you all windows of a particular app that are open, even if they're minimized. I'm minimizing them with command M. So now if I move my mouse here, it will show all of the windows of this app that are open and those that are minimized. So I can select the one I want. Now this brings us to mission control. What is mission control? It's really useful for switching apps on on Mac. You can of course switch apps with command tab just like on Windows, but not everybody likes this. What's a lot easier is to use mission control. So here I have a few apps open and to switch between them I can do this gesture, swipe up with three fingers, and now with my mouse I can select which window I want. And every single window of an application, as long as it's not minimized, shows up in mission control. Look at the tiny calculator. Beautiful. Now speaking of gestures, you can also do with this, which switches virtual desktops. The what? Virtual desktops are really useful if you want to separate things that you're doing. One for work, one for procrastination. One for Google Chrome, other for notes. To add a virtual desktop, swipe up with three fingers on your trackpad and up here you can see all of your desktops. So you can come here and add a new one. Now I can swipe between them with my three fingers. So how do you utilize these to your full advantage? Let's say I have Safari open and calculator open. Now I can go to mission control, pick it up and drag it into another desktop. So now there's no calculator on this one. And if I click on calculator in my dock, it will bring me to this desktop or I can swipe on my trackpad. Now, if I click this green button, entire Safari will take up the whole space. So it says here only Safari. Now, if I open the calculator app, it doesn't fit into this space. It's only reserved for Safari. So if you want to have only one app in one space, you can do that. But I don't like this. I pretty much never use this green button because it comes with only disadvantages. You can't access your desktop with a hot corner. You can't open any other apps on top of here. And the only way to get out of here is to use another virtual desktop. And if I do this, I can get out of here whenever I want and open more apps. So that's virtual desktops. Now let's quickly pause on the dock window behavior because it can get quite frustrating. So when you open an app, its window will open. Pretty normal. But if you have multiple windows of that app, so I have two Firefox windows, and then I minimize one of them with the yellow button or preferably keyboard shortcut command M, it will minimize here. But if I click on the Firefox icon or hover over it, it will not show me any previews of this app that's minimized. And if I keep clicking here, nothing will happen. This will not maximize. If I have both of them open, however, and click on the Firefox logo, it will maximize the last used one. But this one still stays here. So basically this doesn't make any sense for a Windows user and it's very easy to lose different windows of the same app. There's a trackpad gesture. If you swipe down with four or three fingers, you'll be able to see all of the windows of this app and the ones that are minimized and you can click on them to maximize. However, if you're a power user and you use command tab to switch apps and you switch to Firefox, nothing will happen. It will just highlight Firefox, but all the windows that were minimized stayed minimized, which I can't wrap my head around. Why would you want this to happen ever? Of course, there's more keyboard shortcuts that let you maximize it, like holding option as well, but again, it only maximizes this one window, not the other one. Now for every app that you have open, you'll notice that there are no menus here because they're always glued to the top. No matter what app you have open, whether it's Photoshop, Safari, or any other app, you'll always see their menus up here, not inside of the window. This is called the menu bar. And there are a few things you can do from here. First one is this help menu. It's super useful if you're looking for help. For example, you want to find out how to open a new tab. I can type in new tab, then mouse over it, and it will not only show me where it is in the menu, but also tell me the keyboard shortcut. And if you noticed, it also points with this blue arrow. So now I know that if I want to open a new tab, I can press command T and there they are. Another useful thing is for every single app in macOS, you can open that app's settings with command and comma. No matter what app it is, you can do it with command comma. If I go into Photoshop and click command comma, nothing happened because it's Photoshop, but any other app, it will bring up its preferences or just click on the app's name and settings.
See, command comma. Now on Windows, if you want to take a quick note, you open Notepad. On Mac OS, of course, you can use notes from the walled garden of apps that Apple offers, and notes also sync with your iPhone immediately, which is very nice. But if you want something simpler, you can use text edit. This is basically Notepad on Mac. You can customize everything in the settings, like the width of this window. You can disable or enable the ruler, check grammar automatically, and customize things like your default font size. So now you know how to install apps, how to uninstall apps, how to to close windows of different apps with command W, or how to close entire applications with command Q. You know how hot corners work, how to preview apps with the space bar, how spotlight search works, and that you can find everything through it, and you've explored a few useful settings. Maybe set your Mac to dark mode, or change the accent color from the default blue to something more tasteful. You can explore all of the settings on your own, but I want to show you a few that are super useful. Inside of the trackpad settings, you can explore all the gestures that are available, and there are many more not just mission control or switching virtual desktops. In the mouse settings, I recommend going into advanced and turning off pointer acceleration. It will make it so that when you move your mouse, the pointer speed will not be dependent on how fast you move it, so you'll be able to develop muscle memory and close things a lot faster over time. Now inside of Finder, there's this nifty view called the column view. And if I go into a folder, it will show me what's inside that folder. If I create a new folder here with command shift N and click on this folder, it will show me here what's in this folder. Right now the folder is empty, so I'm going to take a screenshot and drag it in here so it shows the screenshot. And if I select a file, it will show me its information and also preview over here on the right. So I can see the dimensions, when it was created, and also how it looks like. If you want to switch back, just click this one. And Finder is the only app on Mac that you can't close. If I click command Q to quit Finder, it doesn't do anything. I can only close Finder Windows because it's the only app that always stays open. Of course, to make it feel more at home and see this path bar down here, you can go into view and toggle on path bar, so you'll always know where you are. Other than that, when you have a file, you can click enter to rename it instead of open it. On Windows, clicking enter opens a file, and I find that I rename files a lot more often than open them, so enter for me is a lot more useful for renaming something than for opening something. If you want to open with a keyboard shortcut, it's command O. Oh, and if you like how this wallpaper looks, it's from my wallpaper pack. I'll leave a link to it in the description.